Hello class, welcome to Supply and Demand Lesson 3. This lesson is on the mechanics of supply and demand uh, that we call comparative statics. You might want to know that supply and demand was actually invented by uh, this guy Alfred Marshall in uh, his book The Principles of Economics in 1890. And in fact, we named the supply and demand curves, curves after him. They're really called the Marshallian demand curve and Marshallian supply curve because there was another economist, uh, Val Ross, who invented something uh, very similar that uh, sometimes is also called demand and supply, but a little bit different. So let's get started. There are really four possible correct answers for simple movements of supply and demand curves. And for test purposes, all of the questions, or at least 99% of the questions that you would ever see, are really about simple movements of supply and demand. So there is a demand curve increase, a demand curve decrease, supply curve increase, and a supply curve decrease. And that's it. So in the case of a demand curve increase, the demand curve shifts out to the right. We establish a new equilibrium out here. And then uh, the demand curve, so if you were to think about how you would fill in this chart, the demand curve increased, the supply curve stayed the same, quantity demanded, which was here at equilibrium, increased, and quantity supplied also increased because they just move from one equilibrium to another equilibrium over here. And since they were both the same here, they will again be both the same here. And finally, the price increases. So if you fill in the chart, it will just be like this. Demand curve increases, supply curve stays the same, quantity demanded and quantity supplied increase, the price increases. Then for a demand curve decrease, the demand curve just shifts back to the left. You establish a new equilibrium here. And now all you do is just describe what's going on. The demand curve has decreased, the supply curve has stayed the same, Quantity demanded has decreased because it moved from this equilibrium back to this one over here. Quantity supplied did the same thing because they were both the same here, and they will again be both the same here, and the price fell. If you were filling in the chart, it would look just like that. Okay, so now for a supply curve increase, supply curve shifts out to the right. Again, we establish a new equilibrium out here. And all that's left to do is describe what happened. The supply curve increased. The demand curve, in this case, stayed the same. Quantity demanded and quantity supplied both increased. And in this case, the price decreased. Filling in the chart, it would look just like that. Then the last one is the supply curve decrease. That would be this way. So the supply curve shifts back to the left. Right, I forgot, we have our new equilibrium established here. Supply curve shifts back to the left. Demand curve stays the same. Quantity demanded and quantity supplied both decrease. And in this case, the price increased. Filling in the chart, one last time it would look like that. Now those are the four movements from one equilibrium to another. Notice in each case, either the demand curve moved or the supply curve moved. They never both move in these simple movements. Also notice that since we were in equilibrium at the original point and now we're just establishing a new equilibrium some other place, the quantity demanded and the quantity supplied must do the same thing because they are after all equal at equilibrium and so if equilibrium point moves and they must have both moved the same way. So those are the four equilibrium uh, cases that there could be. But there are two special cases. There is the special case of price floors and price ceilings. So let's do first a binding price floor. A price floor is a rule that comes down through government that says the price can be above the floor, but it may not be below. So here's a price floor that would be binding. So it's okay for the price to be up here, but it's illegal for the price to be below the floor. And since the natural order of affairs is trying to drive the price down to here, and of course it can't go there because of the law, then we're out of equilibrium. It's called a binding price floor. What you have to realize is when you just pass a law mandating a particular price, 
the demand curve doesn't move and the supply curve doesn't move because after all, they are schedules of all the possible prices and the corresponding quantity demanded or quantity supplied. So the schedules don't move. All that's happened is where we're located on the schedule has moved. So the quantity demanded, which was at equilibrium, is now over here. So the quantity demanded has decreased. The quantity supplied has increased. And of course, this is a surplus because this is how much is brought to market. This is how many people want to buy. So filling in the chart, it would look like this. The demand curves and the supply curve stay the same. Quantity demanded decrease, quantity supplied increase, and the price is indeterminate. Some people argue that, well, the price is obviously higher because here's the equilibrium price and here's the new price up here. Kind of like the minimum wage. The minimum wage is a classic price floor. And it is true that the price has gone up for some workers, but not for all of them, because some workers get laid off. So these workers down here, even though technically there's a price floor way up here, they don't have any work. And so this square is indeterminate. It just depends on if, are you the lucky ones who manage to uh, get the product, or are you the unlucky ones who are s stuck over here in the surplus. Now that's a binding price floor. Let me show you a non-binding price floor. So if you had a rule that set the price floor down here, remember how the rule goes. It just says the price can be above the floor. It just may not be below. Since the natural order of affairs is trying to get the price here to equilibrium, and that's above the price floor, then the law isn't violated. And we just have equilibrium here, and nothing else happens. So that would be a non-binding price price floor. Now what about a price ceiling? A binding price ceiling would be a rule down here someplace because the ceiling law says the price can be below the ceiling. It's okay if it's down here. It just may not be above the ceiling. And since the natural order of affairs is trying to set the price here and that's above the price ceiling, it would be binding. Keep in mind now that the demand curve and the supply curve don't move because all we're doing with the law is mandating a particular price which just moves us along the demand curve or along the supply curve. So in this particular case with this binding price ceiling the quantity demanded would increase from here out to here the quantity supplied would decrease back to there and of course this would be a shortage and again we can't really say what happens to the price if you're one of the lucky people who gets the product, then yeah, the price is lower. But if you're one of these unlucky people who wants the product but can't buy it, who knows what you would have been willing to pay. So to fill in the chart, it would just look like this. Demand curve and supply curve stay the same again. In this case, quantity demanded increased, quantity supplied decreased, and we can't really say what happened to the price. Uh, a non-binding price ceiling, of course, would be if you put the ceiling up here someplace. The natural order of affairs is trying to set the price here, and of course, that's allowed since it's below the ceiling. So the price would just be there, and this price ceiling would be non-binding. Okay, that's it. The next lesson is on some examples from current events or from history, and you'll get a chance to practice moving the supply and demand curves. Okay, I hope you found that helpful.